Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to do something a little different. This is video one of a three-part series where I take you with me as I make a pattern from an existing garment and then I alter that pattern from my needs and then I make a garment from that pattern. Now I'm going to be very transparent. I'm going to show you mistakes I make, what my thought process is and how I make my decisions. And by the end of video three, I think you're gonna be surprised at how it turns out. So I want you to look at the way I'm doing things and let me know if there's something you would do differently because I'm trying to um, set up systems or ways that I do things so I don't have to rethink it every time but kind of put these in place that every time I do this certain thing I always do it the same way so that I'm a little more efficient and I'm always present when I'm doing the work which at this time I'm not so um, you guys hang into the end, watch all the steps, and at the end of this video, I'll talk about the things that I saw. Just a few. I don't know if I want to go through all of them, but um, I'm going to show you some of the things that I think I could do differently, and it's not a right or wrong. It's what could be done more efficiently, what systems could I put in place to make it easier the next time I do this. And if you guys would like to support this channel, I would greatly appreciate it. Um, there are things I need for my sewing studio and since this is my only income it would be really nice to be able to get the things I need to be able to, to make better videos. So if you guys would like to buy me a coffee or shop my Amazon links those will be in the description box and then if you would like to um, hit the thank you button below the video and make a monetary contribution that way that's also awesome and as always share the video so I can get more views on it. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe to this channel and hit the bell so you're notified when I upload more videos. Let's get started. Okay, to start this video, I am going to trace the cuffs first. And um, because I don't have the board, um, I'm going to do things a little differently. And the reason why I like the board is because I can actually pin the shirt to the board. Excuse my dirty little shirt. This is um, my grandsons and boys are dirty. So they just get dirty. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably use red. I feel like I'm wasting so much paper because it's not on the very end, but I want it to be in the center of the video that's right I guess I'll use that for something else okay so this is the tracing wheel I'm using normally I would take a pencil and I would outline here and then use use the uh, tracing wheel where the shirt is sewn to the cuff but I think instead of switching around so much I'll just do the tracing wheel all the way around and like I said normally I would use um, the board and then when I trace around like this I would see the holes and I would connect the dots but um, I can't pin the shirt down because it's just the piece of paper on my table so the lines may not be completely straight so I will have to go through and connect them with a ruler but I just really want to get this done okay I didn't go all the way through because I knew I was going to mess that line up okay so there was a little dip here I'm just going to straighten it up And then I'll go around and just connect these dots. Okay, so now when you get to this point because this is your pattern now this is the pattern piece without the seam allowance you can decide how much seam allowance you want 
and on this side um, I want three eighths just because it's easier for me to work with and I can go three eighths all the way around or I can do a half inch around and because it's a curve and because I'm used to doing a half inch I'm just going to go ahead and do the half inch um, all the way around I really need to redo my table I'm hitting all kinds of grooves with my pencil So I'm gonna put three eighths here so I won't forget and one half here. So that is the cuff. And I'm going to need four of those. And I'm going to cut two interfacing. Okay, so the next is going to be the collar. You see how that's kind of at a, a curve. And I'm kind of nervous. I think I'm going to trace this one, this part out. then here have to really hold it still line that up again There is the line. Now when you're finished, you, you don't have to add the seam allowance right now, but what you could do, cut it out, fold it, clean it up, make sure it's the same on both edge, everything's symmetrical, then retrace it to make sure everything's right, and then add your seam allowance. I am not going to do that. Okay, next we're going to do the collar stand. Now I'm 
trying to cut right where the fabrics meet, not where the stitching is. This is really making me nervous because I feel like it's not going to be really straight. I'm so used to pinning it down. But I really wanted to practice this and it's better to practice on a little garment where I could actually upcycle different fabrics for it rather than on an adult man and then have to use so much money to buy fabric. Oh, this is so iffy because <laughs> try not to move the fabric. We'll see how it looks when I lift it up. That's not bad. Like I said, we can always clean it up. Now you can see I don't follow it exactly because I want to kind of straighten it up. Do it this way. Remember the curves up here? This is where your um, collar will be sewn to. So, what I'm going to do is lay this back down and I'm going to mark where that collar should be. And then when we get it all cut out, um, we'll put the notches in there. So let me just go ahead and get the seam allowance on. Okay, so this is the collar. This is 3 eighths of an inch. So this is going to be 3 eighths of an inch.
Okay, so the point here, and the, the goal here is to lay this out as smoothly as possible without tweaking too much. So the yoke is flat. What I'm going to attempt to do is start on this side and then without moving it, go here and smooth out and trace around this piece. And the test will be when we cut this out in fabric and put it back together, how well did we do? Smooth it without moving the part that you're trying to outline. Now I'm going to come down here and try to get this down here. Hope I got that right. <laughs> All right, looks pretty good.
Okay, you guys. Um, it was at, at this time I remembered that I had some foam boards that I had purchased from the dollar store. And even though they're not the same strength as the pattern board, it worked for what I needed it for. And it was a good size to be able to trace out the ind the independent parts of this shirt. So I'm doing this sleeve right now. And what I'm doing is drawing a line. I'm going to align the shirt where the sleeve and the shirt meet to the top of the line. And I'm just going to go straight down the line and pin it until it gets to the top of that pleat that goes into the cuff. I'm not pulling the cuff up because I need that extra bit for the fold that I'm going to put in the new shirt. And then um, I'm just going to smooth it out so there's no folds or wrinkles. And then I'm going to make a line. Okay, so that first line was a horizontal line. I'm going to make a vertical line. Um, where the sleeve and the cuff meet and it's going to go straight up so that when I flip the sleeve over I will have two lines that I can align my shirt to to make sure that it's going to be correct. So how many things have you guys found so far in this video that you would do differently or something that I could implement that would make me more efficient. I found a few and I will discuss those at the end of the video and we'll see if yours matches mine because I really am trying to change the way I do things. I feel like I do things with half my brain time behind my back and if I would just get the other half of my brain involved I might be more efficient and not waste so much time. And when I get to the second half of the sleeve, you are going to see where my mind probably wandered <laughs> and then I forgot to do something. So yeah, I hope you guys don't suffer from the same um, internal distractions that I do. Now at the top of this sleeve cap, I'm just going to use my fingers and try to kind of work that out. I'm not going to pull too hard. And then I'm going to come off um, with the tracing wheel so that when I flip it over, I can see where I need to place that um, the sleeve cap on the other side of the line. You'll see what I'm talking about. Don't forget to label your pieces. I had to label that because I, I was afraid I would forget which is the front and which is the back. There I lined up the sleeve cap and coming back down here. Now when I finish pinning this part down, you'll see that I'll take that cuff and make sure it aligns with that vertical line that I made before. And that way I can see that it's going, it's correct. It's going to be fine. And then the underarm. Pick up the pencil, Angie. <laughs> I did not pick up the pencil. And right now I think about it. Oh gosh, what'd you do? 
Yeah. I was thinking too far ahead. I wasn't thinking exactly about what I was working on at that moment. Connect the dots. Now I'm going to make the line for the placket. Okay, as we go along, um, I am going to um, alter each pattern um, according to my needs. And what I'm doing is I'm lengthening the sleeves by three quarters of an inch, and then I'm lengthening the length of the shirt by an inch. Now, pay attention because I want you to tell me what I could have done to make this a little easier. Now, maybe you guys will catch on right away and maybe you won't, but I will also discuss this at the end. Okay, um, again, I'm going to draw a line, and this is going to be the center front of my shirt. I'm just going to align the placket uh, along this line to make sure everything is straight, and then from here out, I'm going to pin this down on the board, and from here out, I'm going to just smooth it out to the edges and to the hem and pin it so it's nice and smooth. It gets a little tricky around the shoulders and you'll be able to see some rippling in the fabric that as I move around I just kind of have to use my fingers to get that to lay flat. And remember that you are tracing 
where the fabric of the shirt meets the collar stand or the fabric of the shirt meets the sleeve. You are not going to trace over the top stitching. Just ignore the top stitching. Now I'm using the tracing wheel on the side seam and as I get closer up I will need to pull the pins off the hem to help be able to move that the rest of that shirt out of the way. I wish I, I could explain it better than that but I can't. If You'll understand when you do it. Now I'm just going to connect all the dots and then I will add the seam allowances to it. Actually, um, I'll add the seam allowance to it and then I'm going to lengthen the shirt. I'm measuring the placket so that I know how much extra I need to add to the front, the center front. So the placket was an inch, and so I'm going to do two inches because I'm going to fold it twice to make the placket. And then the shirt hem. And when I come out from the center front, at the neckline, I just draw a straight line. Now I measured the hem and I believe it's a quarter inch, so I only need to add a half inch uh, right there. Don't forget to label your pattern pieces. Now you notice that I put this the the um, hem on this one before I lengthened it, and then I believe the sleeve I did not. It really doesn't matter how you do it because when I lengthen each piece, I'm not touching the hem. Now I'm cutting out my um, extension. And I cut just somewhere in the middle. I don't know if there's really a hard rule for this. I just feel like if I did it under the arm, I'm skewing too much. I may be skewing something there. And if I do it at the hem, I might be making the, the hips too narrow. So I cut somewhere in the middle so that it's the midway point and it's just lengthened. I'm not messing with the width of the chest area or the width of the hip area. Making my mark so I know how to align the lower piece.
I'm going to tape everything together and then trim off the sides of the extension piece. All right, you guys, we are almost finished. Um, we are going to do the back. And what I did is I folded the shirt in half, um, folding the back piece, and I matched up the side seams at the hem, at the underarm, at the shoulders, and then pinned all the way through so that it's straight and flat and I wouldn't have to worry about anything shifting. So now that the center back is folded where it's supposed to be, I'm aligning it to a line that I created on the paper like I did with the sleeve and with the shirt front. So I'm pinning it down and then smoothing it out, uh, pinning the side seams, the hem, the shoulder, not the shoulder because it only goes up to uh, where the yoke is. So I pinned, to correct myself, I pinned at the side seam up to the underarm and then up to where the shirt meets the yoke. So that's as far as I have to go on this piece. Um, the center back line is already drawn, so I have to draw out the hem and then use my tracing wheel for the side seam, this the um, the back of the sleeve, and then the top where the shirt meets the yoke. This one is pretty easy. And again, I will need to um, lengthen this one. So I'm going to connect the dots, add the seam allowances, and then um, make my cut horizontally across the middle of it and then lengthen it. And at the end of this, um, I guess my phone shut off or something because um, the rest of the video was cut off. It didn't show me um, cutting anything and extending the length of it or anything like that. So um, you didn't get to see that part, but I did get the finished piece. And the very last piece is the placket that goes on the sleeve and I'm just making the one piece placket so that I can just I figured this is the easiest one to make um, I've never actually made those other ones and they look really complicated so I just figured let's do this one and it would be really easy to do all you have to do is sew it on a straight line and then when you fold it when you close the sleeve um, that little area this the placket kind of folds up on itself and you can top stitch it so I thought it would make it easier for myself and for you guys so um, yeah I hope it's easier for you guys okay so the pieces we have are the collar stand, 
the collar, the cuff, the yoke, the placket, the sleeve, the shirt back, and the shirt front. Now we have all of our pieces and we're ready to go. I almost forgot that um, I needed to show you guys how to clean these pattern pieces up. So this first one is the yoke and I am taking my ruler and just cleaning up those straight edges my rotary cutter to clean up the curved edges just so the front and back match so at one point the shoulder point where the shoulder neck point was higher in the front but the shoulder uh, sleeve part was higher in the back so I just kind of evened that out so I did the yoke and then the collar it was kind of off um, around the neck area where it attaches to the collar stand so I'm just going to clean those up and I'm trying to take off as little as possible so there won't be any fit issues. And then obviously at the um, outer edge of the collar. And then the cuff just trying to clean up the corners the rounded edges there all right here I'm going to take off just a little bit of the collar because it's going to be a little too um, deep, wide, whatever, for the piece of fabric that I have to place it on. Okay, what did you guys see throughout the video that I could do differently? Now one of the things I was thinking about was when I alter the sleeve and I put that little extension piece in there, I put it in there and then I measured. But I'm thinking if I had drawn one line and then three quarters of an inch below that I drew another line it would be easier just to match the pattern pieces up to those lines and be done with it and then draw the center line so I'm thinking if I could implement that every time I do this type of thing it would make it a lot easier another thing is when I was taking my fashion design classes uh, my professor told us that every time you make a pattern and you're making a garment you need to write your instructions down and it doesn't matter how many years you've been doing it, it you need to write these down um, because it's not like you have a pattern and you're following the instructions you made the pattern and so you need to and it doesn't have to be super like detailed you could just go okay for this one I could have put um, so the yoke to the back of the shirt so the, sh the shirt fronts to the yoke at the shoulder seams. You don't have to go into detail, you just have to know the steps in order to do it. If you create your own designs and you make a pattern for that, you have to come up with how that thing is constructed and you've got boning, you've got um, interfacing, you've got lining, what comes first, what comes second, what comes third, you have to think all of all that. So it's, it's nice to get these things in place now. One of the other things that I struggled with and I always struggle with is um, thinking out the whole process and then writing all those things down. Um, agree with yourself, write it down. This is the seam allowance I'm going to use throughout the garment or everything's a half an inch except the armholes and the neckline or something like that. Have everything decided before you start, before you even start making the pattern decide all those things and that's what I fail on often so if you guys like this video give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hang in there for the next video 